Hi, and uh, welcome back to our next uh, presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Jacob Lemke, an equity research analyst here at ABG following the healthcare space. Uh, next up, we have uh, Nanexa. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, I leave over the floor to uh, the CEO, uh, David Westerberg. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so yes, I'm David Westberg, the CEO of Nanexa since, uh, since uh, actually since 2015 when we entered the, the market here in Stockholm. Uh, I will see to there, there we go. So what is Nanexa then? Well, Nanexa is a, a platform company or drug delivery system company and we have a platform that we call PharmaShell and our vision is actually to be one of the players creating or developing long-acting injectables in many, many different indications. Uh, and uh, we have taken quite a lot of steps, good steps, towards this vision, actually, this year. Uh, first of all, we entered the clinical phase of Next18, one of our projects. We have two projects started, Next18 and Next20, and I'll talk about those later on in this presentation. Uh, we have started to get our patents granted throughout the world in the in the major markets. That's also very, very good, and we are filling up with more patent applications as, as we develop the company. Uh, we have also, as you know, maybe uh, uh, have a collaboration with Applied Materials, a US-based huge uh, company that is developing and manufacturing tools, machines, for, for uh, this technology that we work with, Applied atomic layer deposition. And we're together with them building a facility to be able to, a pilot facility to be able to supply uh, clinical trial materials throughout the, the, all the different phases of, of, uh, of drug delivery, uh, drug development, I should say. And that is, of course, extremely important. Um, what we also have done uh, the last years, actually, is that we have not just focused on the, uh, on the development of the actual uh, pharma shell uh, system or the pharma shell technology and the process creating these shells that slowly dissolves and creates a, a long release of, of the API. We have also focused on this on the other step that we see here is the pharmaceutical formulations of these particles. And it's actually those two together that makes the, the medicine or, or the drug product that finally gonna be marketed out in, in the market. So we're building uh, IP throughout both of these uh, legs, so to say, and we feel that is very important for us, and it creates also new opportunities for 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 licensing agreements going forward. And the the major or the four pillars that that we stand on is of course our own projects. I'll talk about those later on. It's also partner projects where partner fund the development of uh, their API used in our technology and then out and then we out license our technology to those companies it is of course the patent portfolio i mentioned a bit about that and it also is the the possibility to manufacture uh, clinical trial material and onwards actually market supply uh, using this technology of course so two uh, business uh, business model and consist business model consists of, of two steps uh, I should say one is the out license of product products uh, like next 18 next 20 where we develop the projects or products up to clinical proof of concept uh, normally in phase two and after that we out license to to pharma companies that takes it further to to uh, registration and marketing the other uh, uh, leg is the out license of the technology. And there it, we come into to the development or the collaboration with partner companies where they actually get a license of our, to our technology. Uh, so where are we then looking globally? Um, well, we're on a very, very uh, 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 big market and an, a market that increases quite a lot uh, in, this, in this time. As you see, the, there is a, a big development from 510 billion US dollar to almost uh, uh, what is this? And about 900 billion US dollars. And uh, so the drug delivery market is huge. And you can see in the middle picture here that it's not limited to just one indication area. It is actually widespread need for for drug delivery uh, technologies. 
And why is that then? Well, you know, when pharma companies uh, market their uh, the, the first product with a new chemical entity, they want to get it out to the market as soon as possible. And they uh, normally don't really optimize the formulation uh, thoroughly at that time because it's more important to start getting revenues from that project that has cost them a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So there is, in most cases, I'd say, room for improvement, room pro for improvement using long-acting inject injectables to get uh, a better... <coughs> better either uh, uh, effect or get, get a better compliance or so on and so forth. So there is a big need and there is a huge market, as you see. And why is that then? Well, there are uh, uh, looking at the stakeholders, not only is it good for the patients, it's also good for uh, the organizations or, or authorities or so uh, spending money or... or uh, uh, on, on the healthcare. And that's the healthcare system, of course, and it's also the insurance companies in the US. And of course, they are very interested in having cost effective treatments. Uh, for the big uh, pharma companies uh, to get um, um, an opportunity to di differentiate the product, uh, product pipe lab pipeline is, of course, very important. And by combining uh, APIs that has already been on the market with a new technology such as PharmaShell, uh, one creates a product that has uh, IP protection as long as we have IP protection for our technology, and that is uh, to with our original patent to 2033, and we're adding on to that, so well into 2040, I would say. <coughs> Sorry. And our pharma shell, then, uh, we all know that there are uh, several other uh, technologies uh, that can enable long-acting injectables, but pharma shell actually has some unique, really unique properties. One of them being the extremely high drug load, which is about 80% and sometimes even higher. That's really unheard of in any other case, I'd say. We also have a possibility to control the release profile already from the beginning, and that means that we can control the, what's called the initial burst or initial release from a formulation. And having potent uh, compounds that you have formulated in a long-acting injectable, that is extremely important. There are some other uh, features also that is, are extremely important. For instance, the in situ stability, which means that we actually protect the drug substance when it is in, in, a, in a depot uh, in, uh, after injection. And that is uh, also something that is key, actually, to be able to make long-acting injectables in many cases. So, <coughs> with this technology, uh, we are, like I mentioned, we will out-license to, to partners the technology, but we will also build a strong pipeline of product projects. And we have started next, day, next 18 and next 20, and we have the... Uh, the vision or, or the aim actually to have two to four different projects uh, running in different stages of development. So this is how it looks right now. We have Next18 in, in uh, clinical phase, and I'll come to that a bit later. Uh, we have Next20 coming right after that, and entering what we see is that we can enter the clinical phase uh, end of next year, which is very good. Next 21 or next 22, whatever we'll call it, uh, will start next year. And that's something that we're looking forward to as well. And we're looking quite broadly on what, what APIs to, to use and what indications to target. Uh, in parallel to that, we have the, the collaborations with AstraZeneca and other companies that's moving along quite well. And those projects are in, in the face of preclinical uh, animal study development. Uh, looking then at Next18, uh, that is a project uh, uh, where we try to simplify the treatment of MDS patients. Uh, it's, uh, MDS is a, is a blood cancer, you can say, uh, and uh, the patients are treated now with seven uh, injections, one injection every day in a week, and then they have uh, three weeks off, and then they continue with the seven days injections and so on. What we want to do is to, to replace those seven with just one uh, uh, one injection day one each month, 
that will save a lot of time for hospitals, a lot of time for the patients, and actually save a lot of money also for the, for the insurance companies. And even though we haven't broadly gone out and, and uh, marketed this project, we have companies that are interested in it and have turned to us and, and, and follow our, our, our development here now. What has happened in this project, though, is that we started our clinical study uh, this year. Uh, in May, I think, the first patient was. But what we have found is that uh, we have some irritation in the tissue so that we have discussed with the clinicians uh, running the study uh, in, in Huddinge and, and in Uppsala, Akademiska, that we will put this study on hold until we find out exactly what does cause this reaction. And that's something that we're about doing right now, and we, we anticipate to have that, um, that study um, ready by first quarter next year. This is, of course, something you don't want to run into, but at the same time, this is really early in the development, and sometimes it's good to run into problems because it leaves a possibility for us to solve the problem, and solving the problem could potentially be something that could be very valuable for both Next18 and other projects to come. So uh, that might sound strange, but I'll say it, it, that's the way it is, actually. Of course, one would have liked not to run into the problem, just... just go through it, but um, uh, given that we have this situation, I think it, it's a good opportunity for us. So we're learning to for both next 18 and future projects. But what we can see and what is really encouraging is that we see that the release profile that we saw in, in rats and in, in preclinical studies, that could be mimicked in the human situation. So we actually now have shown that PharmaShell can act as a long-acting uh, system also in humans. So that is something to, to, to uh, be proud of. Uh, we have ke kept the development, um, the development uh, uh, phase or the development uh, uh, of, of Next18, the different phases, but uh, I haven't at this time set any times for that but because that it really depends on what results we get in the in the study, in the preclinical study now, where we study what has caused this irritation. Looking at next 20, uh, this is also something that will enable patients to have a more, more convenient treatment, uh, as we see, even though they take tablets today, 38% uh, of them are not compliant to the treatment. So what we do is to exchange those tablets with just one injection. So, and this is a huge market, 11 billion US dollars is what Revlimid sells, sells for this year. So this is really, really a huge market and a big need, actually. For coming projects, uh, what we, the selection process are described in this picture. Uh, what I can say is that we work with a lot of key opinion leaders throughout the world to, to really dig into the different indications that we, are, uh, we possibly could start. And this is something that we will conclude during, during next year and have a, have a selection of, of what project to run. Uh, this is our current uh, GMP uh, facility. What I should mention here is actually that Applied Materials, the company that we collaborate with, are right now, in, in, as we speak now, <laughs> are actually uh, um, uh, installing the first equipment from them in our, on our site. And th this is really thrilling because this is a, a reactor that will enable us to, to uh, increase the both uh, batch size and uh, speed. But uh, we will also, and this is also something that we're working on uh, very heavily this year, is our, uh, this is our pilot plant for GMP manufacturing, where Applied Materials will actually introduce two different tools in two different scales. And that's something we really look into uh, look forward to, I should say, and uh, and uh, that will be a unique uh, capacity. I think we are soon running running out of time, but I will just close by saying we are, of course, covering uh, 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 the all the all the different all the major market, I should say, with our patent portfolio. Uh, we are uh, aiming for having patents that are listable in the Orange Book, which is extremely important for for medical medical products. And this is the last picture that I showed before, so I think I'm open for questions.
Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, David. Um, if we start with the uh, first question, as you said, we've seen some uh, skin reactions uh, in <coughs> your uh, first uh, trial in, in humans, and, and you've done some work on that uh, now. Um, can you say anything, if you've learned anything on a sort of likely cause and what a potential remedy could be? Yeah. Uh, the likely cause, I'd say, is um, that it's related to, to the, this specific API. I should say that. We had actually expected to get some reaction. It was clear from the beginning because the acetylene, that, that is the API in this product, does it's known to cause this kind of reactions. But um, we were, uh, I, I don't know if surprised is the right word, but, but we, we didn't expect uh, to have uh, this, this reaction. Even though it's a moderate reaction, we had thought that we would get a mild reaction. And uh, what we're doing now is to really study what is it. Is it a combination of, of the acetylene with our shell material? Or is it the, just acetylene, or is it something else? And we have a couple of very good alternatives for a solution here uh, that I, of course, cannot go into on, on in today. But we're hoping to study that and to be able to continue with with the project in in a good manner, because the the target part of profile for for acetylene, long acting acetylene, is really some is really really good, and it's a product that, that both the doctors, the, the payers want to have on the market. Uh, and the, I mean, if you're now, uh, I guess, progressing on, on the, um, the work uh, to, to get a solution uh, here, uh, do you have any sort of better sense of uh, when you uh, potentially could uh, reinitiate your, your clinical trial? It a little bit depends on the solution, how, how, we, would, how we would go, go forward. Uh, we would know much more uh, in the first quarter next year. So I think I would actually leave the question as a cliffhanger for, 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 next, uh, for next year. But we will, of course, continue as fast as possible. That's a given. Uh, what we will do in parallel to having this investigation for next 18 is to actually uh, increase our activities in next 20 so that we will be able to actually run that a little bit faster than what we had first expected. And, and that was actually a, a pretty good segue <laughs> to, my, to my next question. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, parallel, you, you're doing uh, preclinical work on the uh, next uh, 20, uh, and you said uh, that we could uh, look at uh, potentially initiating a, a phase one trial uh, for the second half of next year. Uh, do you have any sort of more detailed sense of if we're looking at early uh, sort of second half or is more later uh, in the year? So that that is linked to to some uh, activities that we have on going, and one of the activities is actually the the uh, the manufacturing side is actually because we want to manufacture that from the the, the pilot facility that we we are about to build, uh, and. We have a good process there, I should say. So when we uh, look at the plans going forward, we should be able to manufacture clinical trial material sometime, I'd say September, mm. September-ish sometime, or, or, or maybe a month or two later. But uh, the preclinical work that we will do is something that we anticipate to have ready about the same time, I'd, I'd say. So... Then there are other issues, of course, that needs to be taken care of. But I shouldn't promise anything. But you know, starting it next year, and we'll see when 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 we we'll get there. One thing, though, is is obvious with with next twenty. That is a huge advantage to next eighteen, is that the next twenty first clinical trials can be do in can be done in in healthy volunteers rather than than uh, cancer patients. So the speed or the time it takes to run the study, we have much better control over. So, so that's something that I anticipate to take much shorter time than the next 18 study. And um, considering the, um, the sort of skin reactions in, in next uh, 18, uh, do you sort of anticipate that you have to change the formulation for, for next 20 uh, before you can proceed? 
we don't really see that we would need to do that uh, as it looks today. But we will investigate that, of course. And that was, uh, would, of course, be, be logical since, since it's part of the, uh, the actual active ingredient. Yes. Yeah. And um, if we move forward, uh, how is the work proceeding with uh, a potential lead candidate selection for, for next uh, 21? The next 21 is an interesting one because we have uh, we actually have a quite long list of, of different opportunities and like I mentioned, uh, we're dis discussing uh, I don't know the number but it's over five at least uh, with different key opinion leaders uh, and we're trying to look uh, with all doors open so to say with all different indication areas where one can have a benefit from a, from a long acting injectable, so it doesn't really necessarily be an oncology project. It could be. So we have a number of oncologies, we have a number of others that, that we're currently looking at. Uh, we're looking at both biologics and small molecules. Uh, so we're, we're elaborating a bit there. And uh, uh, we have actually exploring also other areas such as uh, uh, animal, animal health, for instance. Uh, we have had quite a lot of Companies, huge companies in animal care that have, uh, um, would say that we have had discussions with and also done some uh, some feasibility studies with. So that's also an interesting area. We haven't taken any in the decision in the board or so to go that way, but it's an interesting uh, point, actually, interesting way to potentially go forward, not exchanging the human, um, uh, but having us as as, uh, as an add-on, so to say. Okay, and if we move on to sort of a, a different question, um, if we look at your CAS position currently, I think it's quite uh, strong. So maybe what could you say about your sort of current uh, cash runway and, and potential future funding needs? Well, uh, like, I, like you mentioned, we, uh, we had a funding round this, um, this uh, spring or summer where you also were, were involved and... and uh, so we have a strong position now. I say we we cover our costs uh, well into next year, 2023, I should say. Exactly how long uh, depends a little bit on, on the decisions we'll make with next 18 and uh, next 20, but we'll definitely uh, run a long time into, into uh, 23. And just uh, a final question. Um um, applied Ventures uh, still have uh, around, I think, 3 million uh, warrants that uh, have a su subscription period here in uh, December. Yeah. Do you know if they are planning to invest we have further at the moment? We have discussions with them, uh, and uh, uh, that's a decision solely up to them if they want to invest or, or, or not. Uh, I can say that uh, Applied, uh, both Ventures and Applied Materials, they are two different companies, sort of, but of course linked together, they are, are um, what I say, working and, and, um, uh, and investing heavily in, this, um, uh, in, in the pharma field and in, in, the, in the collaboration with us. Uh, but whether they want to, to invest now or later, it's up to them. And we, we have, a, we have a, uh, a, a continuous discussion with them regarding that. Okay, I think that was uh, all my questions. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you for participating. Thank you. And I would also like to thank everyone watching. Now we'll take a short break before the next presentation.